is for life. Unboxed. Has your rupture disc burst? No problem. I'm Philip Filmer from Remby, and I'm a specialist in pressure relief systems. Today I'll show you how to replace a BTKUB rupture disc. However, before we get started, we need to bear in mind a few important safety measures. As there may be sharp edges on open rupture discs, gloves must be always worn here. Depending on the medium, it may be necessary to wear safety glasses. Helmets are mandatory in the indicated areas. In loud environments, hearing protection must be worn. Safety shoes must always be worn when working on plant components. To work on a plant safely, the process must be pressure-free. In addition, it is important to secure the main switch from being switched back on. Before starting work, the corresponding area should be secured. Ruptured discs must only be replaced by qualified employees. Depending on where they are installed, a second person may be required. Read the corresponding operating manual before starting assembly work. We can now begin dismantling our test installation. Following an initial visual inspection of the holder and flange, we can begin to loosen the bolts. Once all of the bolts have been loosened, I can remove the rupture disc assembly. Firstly, the pre-assembly bolts can be removed. Then the holder should be checked for possible damage. At this point, minor deposits or corrosion can be removed with a cleaning agent or a fine abrasive sponge. It is also important to inspect the holder geometry. The gasket surfaces to the flange should be checked for evenness with the help of a set square. If the holder is in perfect condition, I can now select a new rupture disc. To do this, let's go into our rupture disc warehouse. Using the tag plate, a new rupture disc can now be selected. This decision is based above all on the type, burst temperature and burst pressure. Once the right rupture disc has been found, I can open it carefully. The enclosed operating manual should be read thoroughly. The new rupture disc should, where possible, only be touched on the tag plate or on the outer edge. It is also important to check it for possible transport damage.
If this is also in a perfect condition, I can carefully insert the ruptured disc into the holder. The correct direction is especially important here. The arrows on the ruptured disc and ruptured disc holder must correspond. The centering hole in the disc and the centering pin in the holder also prevent the disc from being installed incorrectly. To finish, the pre-assembly bolts are tightened slowly. The complete rupture disc unit can now be installed in the plant. The gaskets used beforehand should be replaced if they are damaged. These appear to still be in order and can thus be reused. It is important here to place gaskets on both sides of the holder as this prevents leaks in the process. The required torque is based on several elements and so must always be calculated individually. Dependent parameters include, for instance, gaskets, flange periphery, the nature of the bolts, and the rupture disc type. To prevent warping, we will tighten in three steps. Tightening in a cross prevents the rupture disc from tilting during tightening. To finish, the complete setup should be inspected once again. It is particularly important here to observe the flow direction. If everything is in order, the plant can be put back into operation.